Dear Diary, Last night the hanging tree was my place of peace, where I could escape the noise and chaos of the world. No one dared to disturb its solemn silence. No one ventured near its dark and twisted branches. It was the perfect place to spend a night of tranquility and peace. As I rode through the first village in Belen, I saw the misery and despair of the people. Their houses were in ruins, their tears were flowing, their cries were piercing. It was a scene of horror and sorrow. I glanced at the notice board. There was a post that caught my eye. Helen, a young woman, was missing and Neelan, her husband, a hunter, was looking for her. I felt a pang of sympathy, but I had no time to spare. I had to find Jennifer's spy before someone else did. So I rode on, ignoring the priest who asked for my help and the drowners who attacked me on the way. They were no match for my skills and sword. I reached the inn at the crossroads, hoping to find some clues. I tried to get some information from the innkeep about the spy Hendrik, but our conversation was interrupted by some rowdy soldiers. I offered them a drink, hoping to calm them down, but they only got more aggressive. They challenged me to a fight, and I had no choice but to defend myself. Unfortunately, they were not very skilled, and they ended up dead. I regretted killing them, but I had underestimated their weakness. The innkeep was terrified by the bloodshed and the possible repercussions for the village. He feared that the Baron would punish the people for my actions. I tried to reassure him that the Baron would find out the truth, but I was not sure myself. I hoped that I had not brought more trouble to this already suffering place. They did not deserve to pay for my deeds. As I explored the houses at the crossroads, the notice boards drew my attention. Mikkel, a young man, was missing. His brother Bruno wanted to talk to me and offer me some clues. I met Bruno, who told me a sad story. Mikkel had been trying to save some women from the war by taking them to the mine, where he thought they would be safe. But he never returned from his last trip, and it had been a week since then. Bruno still hoped that his brother was alive, but I had a bad feeling about it. I agreed to look for Mikkel, but I did not make it a priority. I feared that he and the women are already dead. I wanted to do some good deeds today, so I agreed to help the priest with burning the dead bodies, but I had a bad feeling about it. I went to the three locations he marked on my map, but at the last one, I found a man who was still alive. He was fighting for his life against some ghouls, and I joined him in the battle. He told me his story. He was a merchant who had been betrayed by the priest and left to die, and the priest had hired me to cover up his crime. I was furious. I would not let him get away with this. I rode back to the priest as far as Roach could carry me and confronted him. He tried to bribe me to keep quiet, but I refused. I taught him some lessons he would never forget. I hope I did not sin by killing a priest, but he deserved it. How can anyone be so cruel and greedy in this world? How can people trust this false priest and their gods? How can they give them their last coins and possessions? It makes me sick. I need something positive to happen today. Maybe I can find some people who need my help in the nearby refugee camp. I found a notice on the board that said there was a monster in the woods, terrorizing the people. The commander of the camp told me where to find the site of the supply cart attack. I decided to investigate, hoping to find some clues about the beast. But when I got there, I only found some ghouls scavenging on the corpses. I examined the scene and noticed an arrow stuck in one of the bodies. That was strange. I did not know of any monsters that uses bows and arrows. Then I saw some human footprints leading away from the cart. I followed them and discovered a camp of Sochiatel. They admitted that they were behind the attack and they did it out of hunger and desperation. I felt sorry for them and I did not consider them monsters. They were just people trying to survive in a cruel world. So I let them go, but I knew the commander would not be happy with my decision. As I made my way back to the commander, a lonely house caught my eye. It looked like a forsaken ruin, but I sensed some life inside. Curious, I came closer and found a group of children. Their eyes were hollow, their cheeks were sunken and their clothes were wrecked. They told me their parents had sent them away, unable to feed them anymore. Oh, this cruel world. 
Valen seemed like a hellhole compared to White Orchid. I gave them some food from my pouch. It would last them for a few days at most. I hoped they would find a way to survive on their own. I returned to the commander, knowing that he would not like what I had to say. I told him the truth, that there was no monster in the woods, and that as were the lives of the Sokiatel. He was furious, but gave me the pass anyway. That was unexpected. I had done some good, at least a bit, and now I'm ready to continue my quest to find Hendrik. I arrived at the village where Hendrik was last seen. I felt a chill in the air. Something was wrong here. I found a survivor who told me a terrifying tale. The wild hunt had come to the village and tortured Hendrik, looking for something. I doubt he was still alive. The wild hunt had also slaughtered most of the villagers, leaving behind a trail of blood and corpses. It was a nightmare. The war had already taken so many lives and now the wild hunt was hunting down the rest. I had to stop them somehow, but first I had to find Hendrik or what was left of him. His body was a gruesome sight. He had been mutilated beyond recognition, but I had to examine him anyway. I tried to ignore the horror and focus on the clues. I found a key in his boots, a key that opened a hidden cellar door under a large rock. There was a secret chest with some notes inside. He had disguised him as a merchant, a clever move. He had hidden the information between some orders, but I managed to crack it. Hendrik had some valuable information about Siri. He had learned that she had been in Skellige and Novikart and that she had been guest of the Baron. I was curious to meet this Baron, especially after I saw a flyer about his missing daughter. He also wrote that Siri had met with a witch. I wondered what kind of witch she was and why Siri needed her help. His last entry showed that he was aware of his fate. He knew that he was being watched and that the wild hunt was after him. I was grateful to Hendrik for his sacrifice. Witch or Baron, who should I visit first? But that was a decision for tomorrow. Today had been a hard day with some questionable choices on my part. But at least I had some new leads on my search for Siri. I hoped that my actions would not haunt my dreams. Yours faithfully, G. I hope you had fun with the story of Geralt's secret diary and his journey to find Siri. What do you think of Geralt of Rivia? Please let me know in the comments. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already, so you won't miss out on the upcoming episodes. If you missed the first episodes, here is the playlist of this journey. Until next time.